Welcome everyone, this is Kathy Graham. I'm here with V Technologies and we are happy to present four ways for you to save money in anticipation of this upcoming holiday shipping season. We have a panel of experts today. I'd like to present Mary Walls with Indicia along with Rick Hernandez. We have Ed Evan Adams with Parcel Partners along with our very own Caroline Walsh with V Technologies. We're going to get started today talking about why the U.S. Postal Service is a great option for our ship gear and Starship customers. We're also going to cover some pricing advantages of how you can save money with the U.S. Postal Service. We're going to talk about some packaging options and why packaging might be a factor in helping you save money. Pay on use returns is going to be covered as well along with a very special offer and these are some great ways to save money so I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to Rick Hernandez with Indicia and uh, thank you again for joining us. So for those of you who aren't familiar with Indicia, um, we, uh, we work with companies uh, uh, and make it easy to work with the United States Postal Service. We deliver value by creating breakthrough shipping technologies and services that help businesses reach their customers and thrive. Um, when we talk about how we do that, it's, you know, our customers use us to print those shipping labels to pay for postage. Our customers printed $2.5 billion in postage last year and used our software to ship 605 million parcels. So that's who we are as a company. We've been working with the United States Postal Service since 1987, and we launched the Indicia part of our business back in 2000. So, so we've been around for a few years. You know, when you talk about why would you work with the United States Postal Service, uh, you know, there are jokes that people have, especially if you come from the UPS and FedEx world, about well, why would you ever work with the Postal Service? Um, you know, first of all, they can't even give you tracking on their packages. Well, the reality is, uh, based on independent studies, uh, the tracking the Postal Service has today is as good as the tracking that you get from UPS and FedEx from a customer perspective. Uh, the United States Postal Service has invested billions of dollars in tracking technology over the last 10 years, and they're able to provide up to 12 delivery scans or event scans as the package moves through the mail stream. This is for first-class parcels, priority mail, express mail packages. So, the, when you look at it from a customer perspective, you have the ability to get tracking information for a wide variety of packages moving through the mail stream. In terms of experience, you know, um, sometimes working with the United States Postal Service, you know, there, there are opportunities for improvement there. But one of the things that we've done with V-Technologies is we've made it really easy for you to onboard uh, U.S. Postal Service as an option. So again, with our experience, the relationship we've had with V-Technologies over the last eight years, um, we're able to help you get customers up and running in a few minutes. In terms of the time it takes to actually turn it on, it's literally 10 minutes uh, within the V-Technology environment. Now, you may need to do some configuration or modification to your setup, but when you, when you work with us, you know, in our environment, we typically have a customer up and running in less than one hour, uh, one hour implementation call. And in terms of expertise, why would you work with the United States Postal Service? Well, if you've got the tracking quality and it's easy, well, who else is working with the United States Postal Service besides some of our e-commerce customers? Amazon is probably the largest customer that you guys have heard of. And, you know, as Amazon continues to spread and expand in the e-commerce segment, they shipped over 260 million packages to the United States Postal Service in 2014. That's not including all of the work share you know, that they do with UPS, MI, and FedEx. So more than 35% of their volume is going uh, through the United States Postal Service today. So some questions to consider. If you work with the Postal Service, can you really save money? Yes. Uh, the, the reality is that if you go back to October of last year, the United States Postal Service actually dropped their rate they targeted opportunities up to 10 pounds, up to 20 pounds, where they could win business against UPS and FedEx. They were also mindful of the fact that UPS and FedEx were going to start introducing dim weight charges to their packages. 
So when you look at working with the United States Postal Service, you can save more than 40% on your lightweight parcels versus the private carriers. We have a program we're going to talk about today that allows you to save even more, and we call it the new blue. So does dim weight really matter? I think most of you have already answered that question over the last six or seven months when you look at your bills from UPS and FedEx. Uh, you're seeing that the expansion of dimensional weight pricing is, you know, that two pound, what used to be a two pound box last year, you're now being charged for a five pound box. So there are trends in the marketplace that are affecting how much you pay for your packages. The third thing to consider as we go through this is what's the upside for returns? You know, when, when I look at the return experience from my customers, how does that impact my business? You know, from market research we've looked at and conducted, 95% of customers will do repeat business with you and recommend, two-thirds of them will recommend you if the returns process goes smoothly. So these are things to think about as we talk about how you can work with the U.S. Postal Service, you can save money. You know, how do you take into account these dimensional considerations? How do you incorporate programs with returns? And, you know, when you have problems and challenges, who can you work with? And, and I'll tell you that uh, Indish is here to make it easy for you, and our partners, partial partners, are also here to make it easy for you to work with the U.S. Postal Service. And part of what we've done is we've put together a program where they're able to bring to you contract pricing that makes the U.S. Postal Service much more competitive against UPS and FedEx. And like any good presenter, now that I've done the interesting, lighthearted stuff, I'm going to turn it over to Evan to get into the spreadsheet and all the technical details. So, Evan? Thanks so much, Rick. Um, like Rick mentioned, we at Parcel Partners have worked alongside the United States Postal Service and Indicia to come up with a program that can benefit you as a shipper without need of a contract with the Postal Service. And what you're looking at here is what we call our new blue rate table. The new blue is uh, specifically designed to beat UPS and FedEx on all packages up to 20 pounds. Um, we'll show you here in these next few slides how they can actually benefit you as a shipper. Um, if you're looking at this, this is what you would see as a typical We'll call them purple and brown, you know who I'm talking about. Uh, a typical purple and brown rate chart. Uh, this is what it looks like if you're going to ship uh, a ground home delivery package uh, across the U.S. Um, if you compare this rate chart to the new blue rate chart that I just showed you a second ago, um, and I can show them side by side, you'll see some vast differences uh, between what we can provide with the new blue, some huge savings for you and what you would get with your UPS and FedEx ground. Uh, another thing to remember when you're looking at these two rate charts, um, if you go back a couple of slides, you'll notice that Rick mentioned that our, the USPS is doing two to three days um, on a number of their packages. Um, we find that that happens consistently for 90% for of packages. They're always going in three days or less through the USPS. What you're looking at here, this purple and brown rate chart, that's a ground service, that's five to seven day three to five day rate service. Um, so what you're really looking at is the USPS packages are less expensive and are faster everywhere in the country up to 20 pounds. And I can show you how much you're saving actually you're talking about anywhere from from as low as 14 percent savings to as high as 48 percent savings, 49. You're, you're talking about saving a vast amount of money here in your shipping um, and getting your packages to your customers uh, faster than they'd ever get with UPS and FedEx. Um, now, like Rick mentioned, this is probably it looks a little boring, but I hope you're getting excited just looking at the amount of savings that you can get uh, by shipping these packages through the USPS um, and how much of an improvement your customers will have in their customer experience by shipping through the USPS. Um, let me see. One of the key things about this new blue pricing uh, is it's, it's going to be based on the size of package that you're working with. Um, we have what we call our rule of 700. So any package, when you add, multiply the length times the width times the height of the package, if it's less than 700, the pricing that I was just showing you, that new blue pricing applies. Um, or if it's a soft pack, if you're talking an envelope, then the length times the width or length plus the width is, is less than or equal to 34 
it applies to that as well. Um, so for your smaller packages, there really is no better rate or service in the market than what we can provide right now. I say that with complete confidence, that we're providing for you the best rate and the best service um, that you can possibly get to compete in the marketplace. And then, um, does, this is Caroline. <laughs> Thanks, Evan. So, how does Starship support dim weight pricing? Um, there's a couple things that we do in the application to make it easier for you guys to make sure that um, you get those dim weight pricing breaks. So. Um, one is uh, adding, giving you the ability to add your own packages inside of Starship. So you can define your packaging with the length, width, and height, as well as the um, weight if you have a tier weight on there. Um, in addition to that, we store the standard USPS flat rate boxes, regional rate boxes, so that you can select those. We also have settings in Starship for each individual carrier to um, require the length, width, and height if you want your shippers to um, make sure that those are enabled and always being entered. And then um, the other thing that Starship offers is something called Ship Via Rules. Basically allows you to define parameters for um, selecting the carrier and service. Maybe you want to always select the fastest or the cheapest. So if you have post office in the mix and you create Ship Via Rules such as that, it can automatically select the post office in those scenarios. Um, we do have some ship gear customers on the line. Um, so, you know, this is really targeted, this particular slide here is targeted towards Starship, but I do want to mention um, with ship gear, you would be using the Indicia Professional application, which would also support dim weights um, in its own way. So for you as a shipper, you can use your Starship program coupled with the parcel partners rates to be able to send out these packages real easily, the smaller packages that go through the postal service and save those large amounts that we talked about earlier. But apart from smaller parcels, there's also, we can provide savings for uh, shippers that typically they wouldn't get uh, just because of our personal relationship that we have with the postal service. Uh, we have, as you can see here, typically what you're going to get with the postal service is what's um, you know, highlighted in green, and we've expanded it even further, the type of savings that you can get to, regardless of the size of the package. So we talked about saving with smaller size packages, saving regardless of the size of the package. Um, and then there's also the postal first class rates that you can save on first class parcels, which in the industry are some of the best rates that you're going to get. Um, so for any first class package up to 15.99 ounces, you can use our rates to ship those packages anywhere in the country at the rate that you see right there. I see. That's an advantage too because normally with the Postal Service you're only allowed to ship up to 13 ounces using first class parcel. So with, we're giving you the benefit of being able to ship 14 and 15 ounce packages using first class and setting it at the one pound party mail rate or the one pound UPS or FedEx rate. And, and that, that can be a, a tremendous amount of savings if you have packages that fall into uh, that weight range. Absolutely. Um, so just to kind of sum it up, um, on average using our programs you can save about 30 percent over your current purple and brown uh, agreements. Um, that is a huge amount of money, especially coming to the time of year when you're going to be shipping the most packages that you ship during the, any point of the year. Um, typically, the type of pricing that we're offering to you is only available contractually, but you'll get this without an agreement um, and without any strings attached. Um, and as I mentioned, the transit experience is going to be, in some cases, a couple of days faster than what it would normally get there. Um, and the dimension issue that Rick was talking about, how UPS and FedEx have expanded their dimensional weight, uh, you have the exact opposite with the Postal Service. Your dimensions can actually save you money by entering your dimensions into your software. So um, by utilizing this type of pricing that we've provided for you, you can save money, improve customer experience, 
um, and and generally just improve your bottom line this holiday season. So one of the reasons you may be sitting there wondering why in the world would some other company uh, have a better rate than what I can get by going to the Postal Service? And part of the reason why we have this program is together with Parcel Partners uh, and Indicia, we are sales partners with the Postal Service. We've been helping them grow their business. We've been helping them win against UPS and FedEx. And we are administering this program in a way that is, makes the Postal Service happy. We're really helping them grow their volume. And it's our objective with you to get, you know, frankly, be very honest, we want to win USPS business against UPS and FedEx. That's really the objective that we have with this program. If you choose to try the US Postal Service and you want to go get your own contracted rate, great, you can go do that. And we'll show you how to go about that process if that's important for your business, if you feel that you can negotiate a better rate. Um, the reality is that this program will really impact your bottom lines. It'll give you a great experience with the Postal Service. And as your business grows, we can tailor a contract to you. As you get more volume, as you become a bigger and bigger shipper with the U.S. Postal Service and you establish that level of confidence, uh, together with Parcel Partners, we could put together a program that makes sense for your business when you get to that volume threshold. So. That said, um, we're going to turn it over to Mary Walls, who's going to talk about pay on use returns. Great. Thanks, Rick. So how else can you save money during this holiday season? With our pay on use return service. For the postage at the time you print the label, and you can take advantage of the discounted pricing that you learned in the earlier slides with fast delivery service. And what are the benefits? It creates a positive, hassle-free returns experience. You're not going to lose any money on any of those unused labels. And there's no minimum volume commitments with the post office. And Indicia does not require any long-term contracts. And what do customers want in a return service? We have some calm score study from 2013 that gives some great stats, but in addition to those, we've learned that 89% say that they'll shop again on an online store after a positive returns experience. Businesses have big incentives to make returns process simple, cost effective, and convenient. There are two methods of printing pay-on-use returns labels within Starship. We have the pairing and on-demand. The pairing method is where you can print the label alongside the outbound label, so you're printing essentially the outbound and inbound label at the same time. And you're not tied to the same loss for the outbound label and the inbound label. And then the on-demand label is essentially what it is. You can print it on demand. So if you get a customer that's calling in and wants to return an item, you can simply print a label on demand. You can email it or mail it to the customer that can be used at their leisure. And one thing to keep in mind, you don't have to choose one method or, or another. It's not limited to a single model. So depending on your business, if you want to do the pairing model, and, and then print on demand separately on certain occasions, you can do that. Uh, just make the returns process simple to follow. One point. So, that how much I does it cost? Bit, hey, Mary, can I just hop in for one second? Yeah. Oh, sure. The, 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 the key thing for you to think about, this is a fairly new program with the Postal Service. You've worked with the MRS type return label, the Merchandise Return Service. This is not that program. This is, you sign up for an Indicia account, you turn on this service, and you're able to print these pay on use return labels. You don't pay for any of them until they actually get scanned in the mail stream. This is new. We rolled this out. We've been piloting this program with the Postal Service for the last four years. Um, we've got official approval to roll it out on a wide basis last year. 
and we've printed millions of labels using this that have been scanned through the mail stream. So we've really proven that this model works. The Postal Service is happy with it. The customers are happy with it. And what distinguishes this from, say, a UPS or FedEx type of return experience is that you can create these shipping labels and you can put them in your mailbox as a consumer. I don't have to go to a UPS store or a FedEx store or some other location to get rid of my return. I don't have to travel around it in my trunk for three months uh, while I try to find an appropriate place to return the product. In fact, you can just you know, hand it to your postal carrier when they come to your house or leave it at the front desk in your office. So this is this is an important um, uh, important to bear in mind that one, it's relatively new. You probably haven't heard of it, but we've had great success with it, and the Postal Service is very excited about this as a return solution. So, Mary, back over to you. Okay, great, good point. So, anyway, getting back to the cost. So, in case your charge is a low transaction fee of twenty-five cents, which will only be charged for the labels that are scanned. And once again, we bill them on a monthly basis. Unscanned labels will not be charged a transaction fee, as Rick had mentioned earlier as well. Um, how does this compare with the other carriers? Here's even more savings. If you were to print a return label, um, it would be 50 cents. And if you were to email a return label with the other carriers, it would you can see there's, there's cost savings right there on using our pay on use returns label. So how do you get started? Contact uh, your Indicia sales team member to enable your account. You can also reach out to your VTEC sales rep and they can refer you to an Indicia sales team. We work together as a team to, to onboard customers to enable features like this. Um, what's required of the customers? Um, there are a couple things that are required. You'll sign some terms in it that uh, talks to some of these points here. But the main thing is that you have to maintain a minimum balance of $200 by participating in our auto purchase program. And then you're to use labels for return shipments only. Um, and uh, after the account is closed, your postage balance will be held for 90 days. And this is in the event that if you have any labels that are still outstanding, they want to collect the cost of those postage, those postage on those labels. And in closing, now you can provide your customers the convenience of the Postal Service returns at discounted pricing, great tracking, uh, fast delivery service without the risk of paying for or spending valuable time submitting refund requests for any unused labels. So how does Starship support these pay on use returns? Well, as Mary mentioned earlier, um, you can either pair your USP USPS return label with an outbound shipment or do an on-demand, which means that you just go into Starship and um, process a returns label. So in this particular example, we show you um, the Starship ship screen. Um, and there are a couple of options. You're probably more used to doing ship and process in Starship. Um, which is just F5, but if you do control F5, it will do the ship process and create returns. So basically what's happening there is um, it's going to produce the, in this case, UPS barcoded shipping label, and then Starship's going to come up on screen um, and switch the addresses for you so that you're returning to the company and picking up from um, the, the customer and uh, from there you can select the post office and the various services um, and then have that pay on use uh, returns option there. Um, we made this pay on use returns available in Starship version 15.2 and higher. Um, and you can, as far as um, enabling pay on use and re pay on use returns, once you've gone through the Indicia um, setup process, it's basically just a checkbox in the configuration for Starship, and uh, from there you can can process. Okay, I'm going to send it back to Evan. Sorry about that. I was on mute. My fault. Um, so a couple of ways that you can identify some of the savings that we talked about. Um, make sure you're paying attention to your medium and large lightweight items. 
so handbags, things like that. Those are things that are going to get hit with dimensional weights from UPS and FedEx that will be a lot cheaper through the U.S. Postal Service. Um, like I said, along those same lines, find out where dimensional weights are applying to your products um, and then try and figure out what that impact could be. Now, that's something that we at Parcel Partners can also help with um, is determining, looking at your package sizes and doing some analysis to try and figure out for you what the actual impact of your dimensional weights are. Um, and how much you can save by going through the U.S. Postal Service. Um, along those same lines, make sure that you're packing efficiently. Um, I know that one of the frustrating things is you want to protect your items, um, but people down on the line may sometimes overpack a box uh, beyond the point where it needs to be, and that can extend your package an inch or two. <laughs> um, that inch or two can matter with UPS and FedEx and with the Postal Service you can save even more that way. Um, and then pay attention to USPS flat rate packaging. See what can fit with, with what you're already shipping. See what packages and flat rate boxes um, could be used by you. There's a lot of savings to be had there. Um, and I've seen a lot of companies find the same type of uh, dimensional benefits by using soft pack, by using Tyvek envelopes or padded envelopes through the Postal Service, which you can get online as well or order from the Postal Service. Uh, those envelopes can really um, help save you money on your dimensional problems, especially, like I said, with handbags, shoes, with various products. You can fit them all in a bag, ship them off to a customer, and save a ton of money on your shipping. So now that we've discussed how to save money on the actual postage and freight charges themselves, um, just wanted to bring it back over to um, the, the V Technologies solutions. Um, and you know the idea of saving more with integration, and that idea is basically you know making your um, warehouse or shipping departments more efficient, um, less prone to error, and also making that whole customer service experience better with things like branded email notifications, um, freight rules to make sure that the freight charges being updated on your orders and invoices is accurate. Um, our ship gear product is our middleware, basically connects Indicia Professional to accounting and ERP systems such as QuickBooks and Sage. Um, and then our Starship solution is our multi-carrier um, solution. It supports both parcel and freight, has um, many of the same ERP integrations as our ship gear product and then some. Um, and then our Starship product just has a little more flexibility and functionality related to um, things like EDI and inventory management integration, uh, the ship via rules that we talked about earlier. And then, oops, <laughs> and then the savings. So um, Rick had mentioned earlier that we, um, Indisha, Parcel Partners, and V Technologies all got together to try to um, give you guys a special offer on the Indisha integration. Um, so with this, we are um, providing you guys up to $300 off of the Indicia integration, either for ship gear and the integration to between Indicia Pro and those ERP systems that we support, um, or the Indicia module within Starship. Um, in order to, to get these modules, um, the, we're going to give you a two-week trial of the Indicia integration, and um, you'll need to create your new blue account. In Starship, the creation of the new blue account automatically happens when you um, go through your Indicia account setup. Um, with Shipgear, you'll have a link to create that account. And then um, once you get everything up and running and you're happy with it, you just need to contact our sales team and we'll go ahead and um, get everything processed for you. In addition to the Starship and Shipgear promotional, um, offering that we have. Uh, Indicia is also offering another great promotion for you where you can receive $25 off of your order of 75 or more at the Indicia.com store. And all you have to do is enter um, the promo code VTEC in order to receive that. Okay, I think that's all we had for the presentation. Um, does anybody else have any comments? Rick or Mary, Evan, before we start going into Q&A? No, I think that was a terrific presentation. And uh, I'm going to put out there 
the first five people who sign up, I'll pay your service fees for Indicia through the end of the year. So uh, we really want to get you guys up and running. We're very excited about that. Uh, I think we've covered a lot of uh, things with the U.S. Postal Service and how they work. But one thing I want to mention to you is when you see all those ads on TV with the guy carrying, the postal carrier walking into the office saying if it fits, it ships, the reason why they do that is because the Postal Service has invested billions of dollars in infrastructure to support first class letter mail, first class parcels, and priority mail. And literally, if it fits through the first class screeners, which happen to be the same size as these flat rate boxes, and the cube four, cube five boxes, Postal Service has a competitive advantage to deliver your products. So this is why you, you see that if it fits the chips program. It's the whole basis of what we're doing here. And we're trying to bring that to you as businesses to help you take advantage of it. So really, that's all that I had. Evan or Mary? Nothing else for me. Yeah, I'm good on my end as well. So one question, this is Kathy. Uh, we're going to start addressing, there's quite a few questions that came through while we were all presenting. So uh, one question that just came in, thank you, Mary is this promotion runs through September 30th. So start thinking about some ways you can save with your current carriers, and we are really looking forward to starting those conversations with you. Um, if you want to head over to the next slide, Caroline, so you can have the contact information. And then I do have a few polls to launch. So when we're ready, um, Caroline, if you can start the questions. And then I'll launch some polls. If you can all please answer the polling, this will really help us in our follow-up to you to prioritize those who are interested in, in the three questions I have to ask. Do you have those questions, Caroline, or should I read a few? Um, I'm trying to get to them. One sec. Are you um, putting up the polls, Kathy? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, I am. Okay, cool. So while Kathy puts the polls up, let's take a look at some of the questions we got. Um, let's see. At what size and weight does using the post office no longer make sense? Maybe we could have Rick it, or Evan on that one. It, it definitely does not make sense to ever try to ship anything over 70 pounds to the Postal Service because they just won't accept it. Typically, we would uh, advise you to, you know, stop using the postal service or, you know, think twice about it once you get over 20 pounds, typically. Um, there are situations where that makes sense to, to go with larger packages to the postal service, especially if you're going post office boxes, Alaska, Hawaii, all the exception locations. But 20 pounds is the typical break-off uh, point. Jared, did you have any other... Yeah, I think that from a uh, versus a UPS and FedEx standpoint, I think that the post office has done a great job of actually making a great offering, one to 20 pounds through zone four. Um, if you're over a half a cubic foot um, and you're over 10 pounds, uh, you're also going to be probably better off with UPS and FedEx unless it's to areas that donate would cover like um, Alaska, Hawaii, Puerto Rico, uh, APO, FPO. So there's kind of a sweet spot that there's going to be a blend um, that the post office isn't going to be effective in. And so it's larger packages over a half a cubic foot. And uh, generally, once you get past zone five, over 10 pounds. OK, thanks, guys. Um, we also had somebody comment on the percent discounts for you know the purple and brown rates that we saw earlier, and um, you know stating that they don't reflect negotiated pricing. Um, can you? Yeah, I'll be happy um, to answer that. Yeah, that's good. Thanks. Yeah. So what the what is new is in that negotiated pricing is you have an asset that uh, asset soil reduction on the residential at 25 percent. That would be for uh, UPS client. Those are residential rate tables, so they have the residential built in. So if you're looking at a commercial table, it wouldn't be the same. But for someone who does about three million dollars with UPS, right? So you and FedEx. So if you're a three million spend and you're looking at your actual residential rate, 
you're going to have a discount that has the standard minimum in it involved in that rate chart, and then you're going to have a residential reduction of 25%, and that's kind of where that chart it kind of balances out. Um, so it's not an actual book rate. Um, it's actually a residential loaded table um, for what we consider a mid-size shipper, which is about three three million a year. When you're negotiating your contract with UPS and FedEx, they give you that commercial rate, and that's you know what you see up front. It doesn't take into account all the accessorials, to Jared's point. So that table, that purple and brown table you were looking at, is everything fully loaded, and it is for somebody who's doing about three million dollars in spend. So that is a negotiated rate, but it's your fully loaded rate for residential delivery. So the point of that. So you can have an apple to apples comparison. What am I actually going to pay to get this product delivered? At the end of the year, when I look at all my UPS bills, all the accessorial charges that come in, what did I actually pay for all those packages? Yeah, your DSA and your ESA are going to add probably another 33 cents per uh, weight zone on that, as well as fuel. Fuel is super low right now, but on ground, I, last time I checked, I think it's about 5.5%. So it's about 60 cents lower than a totally fully loaded rate. Um, but it does include the residential charge there. Um, if you need to figure out what your total cost per package is on an average or what your min is with UPS or FedEx, you can send us your data. We'd be happy to crush the numbers. We know all the zip codes that have both ESA and DSA. All you have to do is send us your weight and your ship to zips and your ship from zip, and we'll be able to calculate out what that would look like and run it against that uh, new blue for you if you'd like it personalized to you. Awesome. Thank you. And I think we have a polling question related to that. So if you guys are interested, please make sure that you answer the poll on that. Um, we had another question there. Does Starship use our negotiated UPS rates and tariffs? Um, yes, Starship does give you access to your negotiated rates. Um, you can see both list and negotiated from the rate shop screen if that's set up. I had another question on the rule of 700. Um, this particular um, person thought that the rule of 700 seemed kind of limiting. Um, 7 by 10 by 10 is small for our business. Um, you talked about larger packages, but what are those dimensions versus rates? Yeah, so the post office definitely wanted to go after e-commerce, and they kind of took uh, the two smaller boxes that Amazon had provided, and they go, like Rick had mentioned before, they go through their scanners. Once the package gets larger than that, they have difficulties in their operations. So that, those are the types that aren't necessarily a good fit for the post office. If they're light, they're still going to be a competitive advantage um, price-wise because they don't demand, uh, run dimensions until they hit a cubic foot. So from that standpoint, as long as it's under a 12 by 12 by 12 or some combination of that, um, they'd be able to take advantage of the lower zones or the cheaper prices. But as far as the operations of the post office, they're not quite set up for that. They have kind of a three to five year plan to make that more a part of where they're going. But currently, our, our rates were specific to capture things that you can basically carry in one hand and would fit through their standards. If you go to that chart, though, if you look at the first four columns of that chart, um, zones one through you know, uh, L, um, local one, two, three, and four, those are actually not requiring you to have the package fit in the rule of 700. Any package that's not oversized, any normal size package at the Postal Service will qualify for those rates. The zones five, six, seven, and eight that's where that rule of 700 applies. So even if you just want to, hey, let's just try this for, turn it on, and let's go after a segment. This, even just for the, even if you're just using the boxes you have and they don't fit within these rules, you can still apply this and see the savings for zones one through four. Thanks, guys. Um, I had another question on uh, claim policies with the post office and how those compare with purple and brown. Maybe can, somebody can speak to Indies Insurance? Sure, yeah, I'd be happy to, to take a run at that and then Rick can give you the difference in insurance, right? So the post office has their own insurance on uh, first class up to $50 and up to $100 on priority mail that are guaranteed with the service. Um, and then Indesha offers more insurance if you want to go up to two or 300 As far as the carriers go and who they pay, um, the 
post office is more likely to pay your claim unless it's a failure delivery claim. Uh, if it's a failure delivery claim and the post office shows it's been delivered, they won't pay your claim. Otherwise, if it was damaged in shipment or otherwise, the post office will pay you up to that $100 of your original cost um, filing online with them. And we've had quite a bit of success there. Um, for FedEx and UPS, they also insure your package up to $100. Theirs isn't a true insurance. They're basically insuring um, basically a declared value. And what they do is they actually have uh, packaging requirements. And if you pass their packaging requirements, then they'll pay your claim. Their packaging requirements are roughly about two inches of packaging padding between the outside of the box and your product. But if you're wrapping it in bubble wrap um, sufficiently enough, then they'll pay your claim. Otherwise, they won't. So uh, we shipped about 3 million packages to our fulfillment center this year already. And our percentage of getting paid is about 5% from UPS and FedEx and about 35% from the post office from an insurance perspective. But uh, DJ has great partners that can uh, provide insurance if you want to get paid it on every claim and then you want to pay the extra couple cents per package just to get it going, they have that offering available through them. Well, if somebody is promoting an insurance product, I won't claim that we accept every claim. Uh, the claims ratio with the Indicia Parcel Insurance is certainly higher. Um, we, we were able to manage that through some risk mitigation strategies that um, we engage in. So definitely a good value. It's actually less expensive than using U.S. Postal Service insurance and it uh, gives you better coverage, especially when you go over $100. Mm -hmm. I believe we go up to $2,000 in insurance. And if you have um, special needs, high value product, uh, jewelry, diamonds, uh, anything like this, let us know. Well, we can work with you. There are solutions we can bring to the table that you don't necessarily see on a, uh, published on our website, but we're very good at uh, solving interesting problems like that. Okay, thanks guys. Um, Another question, is there a box size limit on returns? The, the, the rules for returns are the same as any mail class. So uh, there's, if you want to do something clever with your returns, I'm going to turn this question around. If you want to do something really clever with your returns, and we have um, lots of folks who build business models based around returns, these peer-to-peer -peer models or, or, or models where they send out five articles of clothing expecting you to send two or three back um, with every outbound shipment. We have a lot of people who do returns. So one of the solutions that people use is they use poly bags. And the idea behind this is if you can stuff everything into this poly bag, you can typically get a flat rate. Uh, it's, it's, you know, we can give you a flat rate up to 10 pounds, for example. Uh, with the poly bag, so you don't have to worry about how much it weighs when it comes in. We, um, in terms of the limits on box sizes, there is no, you know, the, again, the normal rules apply. If you, there's a, a limit on the girth of a package that the postal service will accept, which is pretty expensive. But if you have a package that you're sending as part of your outbound, then you can use that same the same package dimensions for the return. There shouldn't be any issue. Okay, thank you. Um, another question here: If we ship 30 to 40 small packages per day, will the post office be able to pick up daily? And any special things we need to do regarding that? That's a great question. So the post office to do will obviously come to your place of business to drop off mail. If you have just a small number of packages um, that you could give to that person at that time, they'll take them. If not, it's going to be an individual case um, and we'd have to actually get with the operations of the post office in your area, which is a couple of phone calls for us. So um, if you can have them done when your post uh, office person arrives, you can give them to them. Otherwise, to have a scheduled pickup, um, I don't know what their uh, threshold per pickup is. I believe it's 50 packages to actually have them come and give you a set pickup that would be different than your uh, postal provider coming through. Jared, that, actually that number has gone down to 25 packages a day. They're both, they'll do pickups for scheduled pickups. And, and to be clear, you can also use an option of, if you're not going to have a, um, if you're in that gray zone, 
you know, typically your driver will pick up the packages. But you can also log into your Indicia account and you can schedule a pickup uh, when you do your end of day processing and the postal service will come next day to pick up your packages. So if you know what you have, if you're processing your orders, uh, we can make arrangements uh, to pick up a package. And as long as you have one priority mail package, the postal service will come to your location to pick up packages. And um, and with that, I just want to let you know on the Starship side that um, we, we allow you to automate that during the end of day process so that it can send that request to Indicia directly. Um, and then there's you know the timing um, around that. So. Um, so my next question here, the Starship write back tracking number to Mass um, along with the shipping tracking number. So this is related to the Sage 100 integration. And yes, Starship does write back the tracking number. And um, with any of our integrations, uh, the tracking number in the case of um, the post office, we're going to use the post office tracking number, formerly the delivery confirmation number, and that will go back into the tracking number field um, just as your UPS and FedEx shipments do. Um, can I create Starship rules for returns? Um, if you wanted to do that, that would probably be more of a rules customization on the Starship side. So we can talk more offline on that. Um, questions on getting copies of this. We are recording this and everybody will receive an email with the information and links to the recording. Um, another question, is this only for shipping in the U.S.? So on, from a Starship perspective, we do support um, origin zips um, you know, in the U.S. Um, however, you can ship to any international location. Um, I'm not sure if that's what you wanted. Susan, if you need some more information, feel free to send another question. Well, I, I think the, the point I would make is um, when you use the U.S. Postal Service for shipments originating from the United States, um, we do create the integrated customs forms. We do create APO, FPO shipments. So we do support U.S. origin um, uh, international shipping labels. That's part of what you get. In terms of the returns uh, from international locations, um, that's, uh, and, and Carolyn, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't believe we've added that capability within Starship right now. Um, if that's something that's interesting to you for international returns, uh, you know, we can have a conversation and see if that's something that really matters to you. But that's not, I think, something that's been prioritized within Starship right now just because there aren't a lot of customers asking for it. Yeah, that's correct, Rick. So, yeah, if anybody's interested in that, feel free to, you know, shoot us over um, an email. We can, like Rick said, have another conversation on that. And if you're using um, international, so, so in addition to the United States Postal Service, if you're using international consolidator, obviously you can use uh, direct integration with uh, Starship, but we also support APC, Ascendia, and other international consolidators uh, for outbound shipping. So if you're looking for a consolidated solution, uh, we make it easy for you to get that set up and running with Starship. Great, thanks. Uh, question on a charge for the parcel partner service. Is there a charge for it? No. It comes with uh, your Indicia account when you sign up. I mean, we have a monthly service fee for using Indicia. It's uh, fairly nominal, um, but uh, it's included with the service. Great, thanks. Uh, let's see. A couple of questions um, about ship gear. I have ship gear, and to clarify, does the post office work with ship gear? Um, and on the ship gear side, it's, ship gear is middleware, and it will work with um, the Indicia Professional software, which is Indicia's kind of standalone um, software app that supports the post office. So what um, Shipgear will do is just kind of run in the background and allow you to have direct access to your orders, to bring those into Indicia Professional to translate fields. Um, and then once you process the shipment in, in Indicia Professional, Shipgear will update the um, freight charges, which can include freight rules. 
um, tracking information um, and you know other um, shipment detail directly back to the order or the invoice. Um, another question, how does USPS compare to brown and purple when shipping to commercial locations? So yeah, um, so with, that's just going to be on a um, customer by customer basis, right? Your commercial rate chart is going to not have the accessorials in it, so the post office is super competitive, um, up to 20 pounds for shorter zones, and they are horrible for longer zones. Right, so uh, there would definitely be a good solution if you're shipping under 700 miles, um, up to 20 pounds on a, a B2B solution. If you're going outside of 700 miles, um, unless you're shipping one or two pound packages, which they would both be effective there, as well as some of their flat, flat, flat rate products would be good for B2B. But if you're actually just looking to do weight zone charts, um, once you cross three pounds, and once you're in zones five, six, seven, and eight, they are not um, as competitive and probably not the solution you're looking for. Okay, thanks. Um, does Starship set up a pickup return, or is only a return label created? So on the Starship side, um, for the pay-on-use returns, it will generate the, you know, the label that you um, can you know, provide to the customer for the return. Uh, but I think as Rick mentioned um, earlier, and to his point, was you know, once you have that, you don't really need to set up a pickup for the return because um, you could just put that into a mailbox or you know with the carrier as they pick up during the day at maybe at um, you know your work location or whatever it may be um, there's another question on monthly subscription fees I'm guessing you are talking about the indicia service fee for that um, and so with that there's um, the 3495 service, um, and that all gets set up and configured um, directly in Starship um, when you create your account. Um, also, I believe Indicia offers a, a 30 day, um, you know, on the the service as well. And keep in mind. The 3095 plan can be waived if you're printing greater than 5,000 in expedited postage. Thanks, Mary. On Starship and in Shipgear, yeah, and then in Shipgear with Pro, if you're printing greater than $500 in expedited postage, the account's free. So we've got those two different models there. It's kind of a sales spit that we have. Um, I have another question on, I have Shipgear and Indicia Dazzle. Um, so Starship, or Shipgear does work with both Professional and Dazzle, um, and it just basically connects between them. Um, and Susan, we can you know, provide you with some more information on that. If you're using a, a Dazzle account, I, I will, whoever that person is, first of all, I would um, encourage you to consider looking at Indicia Professional with the label server integration. If, however, you're really happy with the um, customization that you've developed with Dazzle, when you go to sign up your account, uh, there's an extra step you're going to need to take to get everything up and running, and um, we'll work with you to get that sorted out. But you can definitely use the uh, new blue program within Dazzle but it is fairly new. So if you run into one of our sales guys who doesn't know how to do that with Dazzle, go you know, just tell them, hey, Rick told me this works. It'll absolutely <laughs> work. <laughs> okay, so please let me get this straight. If I have Indicia now, is this new blue an additional program? So um, Becky, to answer your question on that, um, it's not really anything new that you have to do except to create a new Indicia account. Um, and I didn't see if you had Starship or Shipgear, but in Starship it's basically creating the new account. And then once you create the new account, it will be connected um, to the parcel partner's new blue rate card for you, so you'll automatically you know, see those rates coming through in your Starship application. Um, the only thing, other thing I'd like to mention is um, for our Starship customers that currently have um, maybe the um, Indicia and are looking to um, use New Blue, um, the, you will want to um, 
either downgrade or um, close your current Indicia account so you just have one monthly fee that you're paying for. And if you, for some reason, want to keep your old account history or you want help migrating that information over, we can work with you to do that. We don't need you to pay us two monthly service fees for keeping Indicia. So if you have some special needs and if you don't want to upset the Apple cart for your existing business, uh, just reach out to us and um, we'll work with you to, you know, especially since we're asking you to try this program out, um, you know, we can work something out with your existing account so that you're only paying one monthly service fee and not two if you don't want to go through any kind of changes right before shipping to Great. Thanks, Rick. Um, and then I just think I have one last question, which is actually perfect timing. Um, we have a lot of returns using UPS and FedEx from customers who did not have regular pickups. In these instances, we would have the carrier pickup from these locations. Is there not a way to create a pickup? Is there maybe somebody on the post office side could help us with that one? I think they were looking to. Yeah. I'll take a run at that, right? So what they're talking about is they're actually creating a, a UPS or FedEx label and then calling for them to go pick that up. So with the post office, um, they don't have a service like that, right? So what they're going to do is expect you to just give that return to the post office or just drop it off in a, a drop box or give it to whoever's coming the next day. So if they're doing it, that's probably more of a business-to-business -business return. And so you could just give it to your post office provider when they show up the next day to drop off your mail if you don't want to write down the post office, but the post office doesn't have um, the technology yet available to go and get a return. That's why you just put it in your mailbox because the people are already coming by and they know to pick that up and take it to the sort, but it's not going to be like a call tag the same way that uh, UPS or FedEx, they don't have the infrastructure for that sort of a thing. Which seems like it should be easier, but I might be wrong on that. Okay, yeah, I the question would just be if you wanted that tracking information, when the tracking information is created and when the scans begin, right? And so I, I think that you, you'll find that you'll get as many scans on the return postage as well through the post office. This is that initial scan of, of having the carrier pick it up and then we're going to be there. It will be a creation scan through your software and then you'll have to wait a day until it actually hits its first scan. And if you're talking about returns for customers who are away from you and, you know, it's a regular service, um, one thing they can do is they can go to the USPS.com website and schedule a pickup. And priority mail pickups are free. So for those one-offs or sort of simple processes, it's a really simple way to have folks come and pick up packages. Uh, and again, as long as you have priority mail, uh, the fees are typically waived for pickup, and they'll also, if you have 50 packages and you notify them the day before, um, they can come and pick them up, uh, and they can be ready for it. They can bring the dolly. They'll get the drivers will get the notification usually. Um, and if you're having any kind, of, this is one of the things that we do though that really helps. We have a sales team of 75 people, uh, 60 of whom are out in the field, and part of their job is also to provide customer service. So when you have operational challenges with the Postal Service, and operational challenges happen with any carrier, we're there to help you get those situations sorted out. So you can always work with your, your Indicia rep in the field. They know who the postal carriers are. They know who uh, the operations managers are. They know the district managers. They know the postmasters in your area. And we can usually get operational issues sorted out if you're having any kind of challenge with customers. <laughs> Awesome, thanks. So I think that's all we had for Q and A. Um, you know, we'll review all these and make sure that I didn't miss any. Um, Kathy, I'm going to send it back to you. Thank you. Well, we happen to fill our time up today, and I want to give you back your two minutes, but I can't. So uh, thank you so much for joining us, and for the presenters. Thank you so much. We really appreciate that. Rick, you might want to jot down Becky's name because she does want to be part of your first five for your surprise Excellent. offer. Excellent. Yeah, so I've got four Becky. more. <laughs> four more people. You, you got to get me. Um, and my, <laughs> my email is rickh at indicia.com. So the first uh, four people, four more people to respond 
um, we will uh, get you guys signed up. Perfect. Well, Becky, we'll get you in touch with Melissa as well as I see you're on QuickBook. So um, I'll jot down her number, and I sent you her email. And again, thank you so much for your time, everyone. This is super informative, and we're looking forward to holding more sessions like this in the future with, with you at Indesha and Parcel Partners. So um, good luck getting geared up for the shipping season, everybody, and we certainly look forward to hearing from you. And we'll be following up with you with a follow-up email with the presentation and a few useful links to get started. Cool. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you.